Got the Houghton Belair 3500, we've just reached temperature. Microwave simultaneously, all from batteries. Anywhere, anytime on the side of the road. There we go. G'day guys, Maddie from Extreme Auto Karen and Camping with you again today on a Gold Star off-grid setup. Um, I don't think I've done a Gold Star with uh, such a large setup on it yet, but here it is. I'll give you a rundown of this one. So this is just a quick video. Once again, we are time poor leading up to Christmas. So down here is where we have fitted all of the fruit. Now, we'll get into the specs in a second. I'm gonna show you why we fitted it here and what we've had to do. So there's still got storage, as you can see, which we built this division around it. Um, and that was old mate's concern, you know, they didn't want to take up too much storage space. I mean, why would you? Because these don't have a lot of storage, especially these, this has the bunk beds at the rear, so it's not a lot of storage. But for you Gold Star fans, that's where the original battery system was, down here. Now we've freed up all of this space. There is absolutely nothing in here apart from the, the factory original pump. So they can store more stuff down here now, as well as still store stuff under the bed. Now, yes, we have taken a this space here, as you can see. Right, but we've built this division so they can still put their boxes. And there's another reason why I like people to have their vans kind of set up, because I can actually see what you store, where you store it. You know, if you've got a blow mold um, table or something like that, I can actually see it. And these guys have these boxes, so it's perfect. I've made them fit. Happy days. So they can still store stuff here if they need to, especially this spot, because it's accessible quite easily. And that's what we've done for them. So they can still open this up and still store stuff here and get to stuff quite easily. And it's, it's to be able to do that without lifting the bed is, is um, a really good thing. I'll put that back where it came from and I'll give you a rundown of what we've got here. So this full off-grid setup for this Gold Star, um, I made this up a while back and obviously wanted to run the air conditioner and it's my microwave ready. So we've, um, we've worked out the amount of solar we could put on the roof was at the time about about 800 to 900 watts because he had a, a bit of a shading issue uh, with this Houghton air conditioner. If you guys um, know about them, they're quite tall, so that they sit off the off the roof space quite a fair bit, and I'll show you in a minute. So they they cast shadows quite quite easily. And the original solar system on this was uh, comprised of an Enerdrive 180 and two 100 watt no name brand panels, all tied into one old regulator which used to live in here the whole system is completely gone it never worked right and it's it just causing nothing but troubles this setup now is just on another level so solar wise we've managed to squeeze three 200 watt exotronic panels up on the roof right so there's 600 watts there all tied into one of the victron 50 regulators I should be using my other camera so one of them is tied into this now the other one we've gone for 4160s and we're able to squeeze three along the front edge and one more at the rear. We've split that into two strings and then tied it in down here. So that's basically two in series and then we bring it two in parallel. So it keeps that 40, 45 VOC um, range for that array because there is a bit of a shading issue towards the rear there. Um, it's not like 
like do or die, but it's it's there and you can't hide from it. So if the sun's really low, it will cast a shadow through on, on that panel. That's why we've kind of had to do it. But he doesn't really have much space for a lot more. We've left a spot. We could have, could have had another 200 watt panel, but we left the spot on the roof roll, mate. Should he go for a Sat King Pro Max or even the Starlink system that you can sit it in situ on the roof? And um, that won't affect any other solar panels around it. So two solar controllers on this, guys, taking care of the uh, 1,240 watts. Heaps of power. So 1,240 watts of solar, guys, on this Gold Star, uh, running on two solar controllers, so two arrays, essentially, on the roof. Three strings, though. Now, power-wise, we've gone for the Multi-12 3000 120 inverter charger, running on all of the factory outlets, guys. That's the microwave, the air conditioner, as you can hear. All of the GPOs outside, um, you know, down by the bed, uh, washing machines, hair dryers, uh, toasters, kettles, you name it. It's all gonna work off grid at all the touch of a button, which I'll show you. Battery storage in this, uh, 560 amp hours of the PowerPool custom-made lithium batteries. Uh, it's about six and a half kilowatt hours if you were to work it out that way. And DC charging on this, because old mate's uh, got another DC charger in the Amarok. It's a, we'll get fitted to the Amarok. So we've had to scale it back on this. So we've gone for the Red Arc 25 down here. And that's got the side Anderson plug input as well. So if he wants to run portable solar, he can quite easily just plug it in and it'll run on top of the existing system that's on this. So you can get more power if he parks in the shade or just wants to charge faster. It's, you can do that. Uh, everything has a label. You can see it down here. All right, it's all neatly done. It's all uniform and in one location, which means if there ever is a problem, if someone drops a spanner on a terminal or needs to disable something, you can get to it quite easily. It's, it's all here, ready to go. And it's quite simple. Anyone can really get to it and disable something. So all of the heavy cables here, double and some plugs um, running on this. So it's a bloody good setup. Servo GX with the Touch 50 on this. Now you can see above my head here, there's, I don't know if you've fed any wires on a Gold Star before, but these are the sandwich, um, fiberglass sandwich insulated panels. So they, there's no wires that run through the walls on this. There's like slots every so often and up in these overhead cupboards, every you think 400 mil, there's a big channel that runs right across. So we're able to feed wiring from left to right very easily on this and very well hidden, which we've done. Uh, we actually haven't had to impact on this van's um, existing infrastructure really at all. It's just apart from mounting a screen and mounting the products, that's pretty much it. It's been pretty cool. Even the relocation, so obviously the original batteries that were there in those plastic boxes that you guys have seen, um, you know, that all just kind of came out. And funny enough, all of those yellow uh, crimp terminals, all the wires literally just fell out. So if you gold star people that have those existing batteries down there, please check those yellow terminals. These just psh, fell straight out. So. I would be redoing that if you're not doing anything like this. So all of the charges and solar charges and everything that was here has been rem removed and we put the Servo GX here and that's running up to the touch screen up here. So I'm able to control everything at the one screen. So a quick explanation of what's happening right now. We are not plugged into the grid. We're not plugged into shore power. This would light up here on the red. All right, which I'll show you in a second. So we're inverting, we are off grid. We're pulling from the batteries. That's what's happening at the batteries. So we're running that air conditioner at the moment. It's a thirsty one. It's not like a Truma Inventor. It's not like a Harrier Light, Harrier Plus or an Ibis 4, those inverter style air conditioners that will ramp up slowly and you know hover down. This, this is a roof clunker, albeit a quiet roof clunker. It's still, it's not a soft start AC guys, and it will pull some power. That said, it's pulling a lot of power, but mate, I'll tell you what, it has got that cold in here that quick. So I've set it for 16, I've got a window open. I set it for 16, it's, it already cycled off a second ago, so it's getting pretty bloody close to temperature in here. Yes, it's smashing some energy, but it's cooling the van down real quick, so I don't think these guys are going to have any dramas running this 3500. We haven't done a lot of them off-grid because we do know that they are thirsty, um, but as time's gone on, you know, we're running it. If these guys want to change it, they can. It's The hole's in the roof, they can swap it out at any time to upgrade to a different type. Anyway, she's running and we're off grid. So there we go. We're pulling just over a thousand out of the battery, which would be obviously the compressor fridge and lights. That's why it's a thousand and fifty from the battery, but the AC loads are like nearly 900. So that difference there in that number 
is your DC loads, you know, your, your fridge, your lights, etc. So, uh, what you are interested in here on this screen um, primarily is the battery. What is happening here is dead eye accurate to what is left in your batteries. If it says 85%, you are 85%. There's no trickery here. The numbers where the minus is, that's telling you what you're pulling. And obviously when that minus disappears, see the flow of energy? That flow will reverse and you'll be charging. Obviously we're in a shed now, guys. There is absolute zero solar in the shed. <laughs> so I'll plug the grid in and show you how that one charges. All right, because the servo, the Touch 50 is still in inverter mode. There we go. All right, so that's on, that's on. But because we're in inverter only, I'll show you what happens. All right, come with me. So, oh, I better turn that off, eh? All right. So now that we've plugged the grid in, look. See how there's nothing there? All right, there's nothing there yet because this is selected on inverter only. So it needs to be in the charger only position or on. On is automatic. So what on means is it's it's ready to send. So if you plug a generator in or if you plug a 10 amp supply in or if you, you plug the shore power in, if you plug your side input on the van in, this in the on position will automatically sense it. And I'll show you how it does that now. So that's off and that's on. So that's on, but I'll show you what happens. You hear a click very soon. There's the click. The shore power will light up and it's gonna go into bulk charge. Now take note of the charge rate. We've set this for 120 amps, guys. Obviously minus some DC loads. So we are fast charging now from the grid. Now, if I'm on a 10 amp power supply, just throttle her down. Oops. We need to move that arrow up a little bit higher. Except, now take note of that AC input at the top. See it drop? So the most of the pull is about 2400, I think. It should be thereabouts. And see the charge rate has dropped also. But yeah, I mean 80 amps, it's still pumping, <coughs> pumping some big power in. So a quick explanation of what I just did. I just controlled the AC input. Even though we're on a 15 amp supply, oh mate's got a big shed here with a 15 amp supply. I control, I tell this caravan what to pull from the shore or the pole or the generator, whatever. Whatever you plug into, I tell it to do it. Default will be 15, 16 amps. That's what you'll leave it on. That's what your plug is. That's, that's the maximum that plug on the side of your caravan will allow us the 15 amp to come in and your breakers are all rated at 15 amps, so it won't exceed that from the input, all right? And that's very cool to be able to do that. So if I set this for, you know, five, wait, let's drop it even more, I'll show you. So we're on the grid, I'll go four. So now watch that AC input drop. Now here's the kicker. Take note of the loads. So remember the air conditioner is running, guys. It's pulling 950 watts. But now look at where the energy is coming from. It's using a little bit of battery power to supplement. See, it's, see the modes change to assisting. So it's, it's using that maximum of four amps that I just set, and it's assisting. So back to my original um, videos that you guys might have watched. When you run the Honda generator, a small Honda one, or a small generator with a smaller output, you would set it for that low current input so it doesn't make your generator clip off. So if you're running out there all the time, turning it off. Same with, you know, if you're staying at a station stay, instead of you flicking the breaker off all the time and annoying old mate because the power keeps going out, you set it, you know, you got a Victor on now, you set it for 10 amps, you set it for 10, you set it for eight, whatever, and, the, and the, what you'll find is you remember, this is just for those big, big inductive loads, guys, or if you put your kettle on real quick. If you overshoot that number, the rest of the energy comes from batteries with this setup. The rest of it comes from batteries. Up to twice its output, it's like 4,800 watts it'll do. It's um, pretty amazing stuff. So now that we know we're on the shore, I'll turn that back up. Go ahead, go to 10. It is in the shed here, go to 10. So now that you see that ramp up, I'll go to the other picture. You can see it better. See it ramp back up? Watch the charge rate increase. So it's still running the air conditioner. That's actually kicked out now. So we're still running the air conditioner, but now we're charging. All the energy is going straight into the battery to bring that battery up. 
How cool is that? There we go, guys. Full off grid setup. 560 amp hours of lithium. Six and a half kilowatt hours of storage. Got the multi plus 12, 3000, 120 amp multi plus inverter charger running all the factory outlets. Got the Red Arc DC DC charger, 1225 model on this one with the side Anderson plug so we can plug portable solar in. We've gone for two of the Red Arc 50 amp MPPT smart solar controllers to take care of the 1240 watts on the roof. There are three strings on the roof of this. Two are going into one controller and the other string into the other. Four 160 watt panels and three 200 watt panels on the roof. There it is guys, happy days. Big off-grid setup, big upgrade for Gold Star. Uh, these guys are gonna love it. Enjoy that one.